So I just want to just touch on that for a second because I want you to know when I was reading some of these things that the, the, the transforming power, which we did baptisms on Sunday, it was just amazing to just be present and, and see the lives that were being transformed. And, and so baptism is an outward representation of an inward transformation and that's what's happening to all, all of us and it's going to continue to happen because we're going from glory to glory to glory but in the, these earthen vessels is the power of God the power of God's love that's not only there for us but it's there for everybody else so that his light will shine through you and I will tell you what you need cracks in your vessels so that the light will come through. You need broken pieces so that the light will come through. Do you understand that? And so it's okay that you're broken, and it's okay that you have holes in that vessel because inside of that vessel is the power of God's love, and it is shining through you through your brokenness, through your cracks, through the stuff that you might have bandaged with shame or guilt or condemnation, and God has ripped them off, and now his light shines, and you can stand up and say, hey, this is where I was, but because of God, this is where I am. But I understand where you're at, and where you're at isn't where you have to be because if God can do it in me, he can do it in you. And you just have to believe that what the word said is truth because the truth is what makes you free. So you have to believe. It even says believe your God in the word. It says, believe me. Believe my word is me. Don't just pick out parts and pieces that are accommodating to our flesh, but even the ones that are hard, the ones that make, make us step up. It reveals our hearts because the word of God teaches that our hearts can be wicked. Right. I mean, you know, we're singing that song, no jealousy and no envy, and we all fight with those things, but what we got to do is recognize it, throw it down and say, I don't want to be jealous, God, that is not of you, that's not you that's pouring into me right now, that is flesh, or that is the enemy trying to get me caught up into some stuff where my eyes will get off from, yeah. off from you and will get on others. Yeah. And then I start to perform because I want to be like they are because I think that's the way it's supposed to be. No. You know, before we sing that song, Here's My Heart, Lord, from Casting Crowns, he says, you come to God as you are. That's what we all have done. We've come to God, all, all of us, as we are. He takes us as we are. Good, bad, ugly, and indifferent. But this is the thing. He loves us enough not to let us remain. I don't want to be the same as I am today, right. a week from now. That's right. I want to grow because I have some stinking thinking. Yes. You know, I've had junk in my trunk that I get rid of, and then somebody else's junk tries to jump in my trunk, and I have to get it out of there, and I got to keep it clean. Yes. And I want to fill it with life Amen. and goodness so that as I walk and I minister that the goodness of the Lord Mag magnifies through me because yes. the word says that we're drawn by his goodness. Yes. We're not drawn by Dan's goodness yes. or Tammy's goodness or my goodness. Yes. It's his goodness. Yes. I can only love like I love because of him. Yes. Because I put myself aside and love beyond my capabilities. Yes. Because my capabilities are limited. That's right. Because they're full of my thoughts yes. And my protection. Right. <clears throat> One of the hardest things about serving the Lord is putting down your walls and trusting him. But this is the key. You look through the person and you look for Jesus. Amen. Even when you see Jesus in a life, doesn't mean that that person might not hurt you sometime. But if you really know that person and who they are in Christ, you won't get offended, or if you are, you'll lay it down quickly and you'll forgive them because you really know it's really not who they are. They're just having a bad day. Yes. So you extend grace and mercy to them. And those things are in all of us. And we go through things so we learn how to extend yes. that. See, you got to go through what you're going through 
even though, as the word says, just beyond that, we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. <laughs> and we are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but we're not forsaken. Struck down at times, but not destroyed. Because we're carrying Jesus within us. And in our hardest times, and these things that Tammy spoke about, she's going to come up here in just a second, especially the one that she wrote on Monday. And I started reading some of the, com I, get, I, get the I get notifications of the comments. And I started reading some of the comments, and I was like, wow, God. This is really good. And I tried to send it to somebody and it wouldn't go, so I literally had to copy and paste it because sometimes that darkness is hanging around and it's pressing on its heart. But we have to remember that we are the ones in authority, that we can stand up and that we can bring these things down. That's why we sang that song, Rise Up, today. That's an old song. We used to sing that. Jan grabs my arm. She goes, that's the song. Because we were singing it when we were marching around this property in 2013. And we were telling those things, get off this property. You're not going to be here. When people come in, God's going to deliver us from addiction and from jealousy and from gambling and different things that we've been caught up with. It's going to heal marriages and heal relationships. And the ones that are broken, God's going to love them through their brokenness. And, and he's going to be there. And we're going to love them through it no matter what. Because the devil's not welcome here. Amen. Right. So with that, Tammy, why don't you come up, and um, I've got your first one blown up, and then we'll get to your second one. Put that one. I need that. Just easier that, with that one. And you can move that thing. It's okay. I could put it on other people, but I don't know if I can get it on myself. Hang on. Just use that one. What's that? I put one on every day for work now. It's not like this though, it sticks right in my ear. I got too much hair. It's okay, I'm gonna need it again anyways. Good. Yeah, All right. I'm turn her down. All right, how's that? Yes. All right, so Monday morning, well, like she said, Ellen and I alternate, so we take turns monthly. So this is my month. And so usually what I do is try to get it out in the morning because your day gets so busy. And so um, when I get up Monday more, or in the mornings, I ask the Lord. I ask him, what do you want written? I don't try to come up with it because that's not going to profit anybody. So Monday morning, actually, how I got this, you want me to read it first? Sure. All right. Though, it's, though it is morning, 6.40 a.m., darkness is hanging around. So, you know, nor, normally in the morning, the sun should be up, but it's morning. 6 a, 6.40 a.m. is morning. The darkness is still hanging around. I don't have to wait for the sun to pop up. I turn on the light, and the darkness leaves my atmosphere. The enemy tries to fill the atmosphere, but we are atmosphere changers. No longer do we need to sit in his atmosphere. We carry the light in us. When we walk in a room, we either are taken over by what is there or we change it. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. So lift your head today and walk in him and be the change that is so needed. No fear, never, he never leaves you nor forsakes you. So that morning when I got up, it was just that. It's like, wow, it's 6.40. I was thinking about how dark it was still outside, you know. Um, and I turn on the light, and I no longer have to sit in that darkness. I don't have to wait for the sun to pop up to go about my day. I have the ability to make that happen, you know. In, in, in this sense, it's natural, a light, but 
in the spiritual realm, I have that ability also. And how I, she asked me to tell you how I came about that. So how I actually came about this was I sat there and I asked the Lord, you know, what is it today? And he actually was reminding me of Sunday service. So I was thinking about um, Sunday morning service and I was thinking about being the peanuts on the table. <laughs> You know, and she talked a lot about how we are in this world. And so I was thinking about that. And also she um, the scripture, she says, greater, are, greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. And I, you know, I've been a Christian for, I don't know, 25 years. I don't know. And I've heard that scripture. I know that scripture. I've said that scripture. But when she spoke it that day, when you spoke that Sunday, something went in me. And it was like, whoa, I got it. Like, I got it. And so, you know, and so if I really realize that he who is in me mm -hmm. is greater than he who is in the world, then I am the atmosphere changer. Those things around me have to change because I'm there because greater is he who is in me. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of where all that came from. Um, and another thing, you know, as I was thinking about that, which came about Sunday, you know, I started a new job and I've been there. This is my third week, third or fourth week. I don't remember anymore. But anyway, when you're going into a new job, people aren't familiar with you. And so I, at this point, have um, an advantage to where now where I'm at because the people who knew me where I was before, they've seen me for years and I've made mistakes and I've been this or that, but now I am in a place where they don't know me. You know, they're not familiar with me. And so now I get the opportunity to be that light. It's not, oh, that's Tammy, you know. And actually I was, uh, last week Thursday, I was getting ready. Um, every other month we have to stay till 5.15 and then the other month we have to stay till 5. And so Thursdays, you know, I want to be here for pre-service. And so I'm getting ready. I'm like, okay, I'm watching the clock, 5.15, 5.15. And, and so when you're the last ones out, you got to make sure everything's locked and all this stuff. And, and uh, somebody else was in the building, so we didn't have to do that. I said, well, then I'm out of here. I said, I got to go to church. I said, I go to church on Thursdays. And the woman says, oh, well, pray for us. And I stopped, and I'm like, I'm like, what? And she says, pray for us heathens, you know? And I was like, I stood there for a second, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I went on, and, you know, and I have my little signs. Everybody decorates their little cubicle, so it's all good. But anyway, um, we have that ability, and I pray, Lord, <laughs> you know, reveal yourself through me to them. Because in this place, um, there aren't Christians like I was used to. And so, you know, there's, you know, you all work places. So anyway, that's my heart. And so after the, ser after the sermon on Sunday, that really is what led me to this. Like, I don't have to sit in an atmosphere I can be the atmosphere, you know. I don't have to receive it. So even in, you know, you walk in places and you can feel an atmosphere. You either choose to succumb to that or you change it, you know. And so that's up to us. So that's really how all that came about. So. That's good. Hang on. I don't know how to get to the next one. Stay right there. I'll get it. So... Um, this is the thing. Just uh, recently, too, um, somebody else told me, yeah, like, Pastor, I got it. I got it. And I'm like, what do you mean you got it? You know, I'm thinking to myself, the very same thing she got. It's like we get revelation at different times, and she got the revelation of Christ in her. Even though... <laughs> It's been something that God ministers in this church since day one. Everybody's getting it at different times. But when you get that revelation, then you really, really understand what's happening. Because Tammy just did the move, too. Are you see me? Me and Christ. This is the thing. That's the power that it talks about 
all over the Word of God, but it's not, it's not just like, it's not Superman, it's the person. It's the person of God, the Holy Spirit. And, and so when we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, the Spirit of God comes and He joins us. You guys know this. Many of us know this in Ezekiel. And we get a brand new spirit when we become saved. And now the Spirit of God, who cannot be attached to sin, is attached to us. What does that tell you? That means your spirit man is not a sinful spirit man. Your flesh can still choose to sin, but your driving force now is not to sin. It's changing. Because the Word of God says that He'll cause us to change. So as we get revelation, it's even greater. And so Tammy got the revelation of God, Christ in her. That's the hope of our glory. Amen. Because that's who he is. We're not, we're to be used of the Lord. There's much in all of us. And we're used at different places and levels. She said, I want to be peanuts on the table this week, she texts me. You know, because she's in a new job. They don't really know who she is. And she wants to be salty. You know? Amen. So it's really good. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She wants to be peanuts. Yeah. So we're going to get <laughs> and I have peanuts in my desk too they remind me so the second one she, okay so pastor asked me to tell you you wanted to, how I got them yes okay so again I wake up and I ask the Lord and so sometimes I just you know I hear um, a, a scripture or something to go to I'll just hear like the, this morning I heard Psalms 57. Now let me tell you the honest to God truth. Sometimes I hear a scripture and I get there and it's not there. Like that's not a chapter or a verse. So I don't always hear correctly. So I'll go, well, that wasn't you, God. But, but then there's other times, you know, it is there. So it's the truth. It's the truth. So, I mean, it doesn't discourage me. I just then, okay, I just go somewhere else. So, because it's not there. So this morning I heard Psalms 57. And um, this, I'm reading this out of the Passion Translation. I got a Bible for my birthday. And um, it's not one that you, I mean, this is just one that you read. It's not something you study out of because it's not all correct. It's a paraphrase. But anyway, as I was reading this, and I'm going to read it to you, it says, this is David speaking. And he says, please, God, show me mercy. Open your grace fountain for me, for you are my soul's true shelter. I will hide beneath the shadow of your embrace under the wings of your cherubim until this terrible trouble is past. I will cry out to you, the God of the highest heaven, the mighty God who performs all these wonders for me. For heaven... From heaven, he will send a father's help to save me. He will trample down those who trample me. He will always show me love by his gracious and constant care. I am surrounded by these fierce and brutal men. They are like lions just waiting to tear me to shreds. Why must I continue to live among these seething terrorists, breathing out their angry threats and insults against me? Lord God, be exalted as you soar throughout the heavens. May your shining glory be seen in the skies. Did you see the transition there? Like he's going, oh God, all these things are here. And then he goes, Lord God, be exalted as you soar throughout the heavens. May your shining glory be seen in the skies. Let it be seen above all the earth. For they have set a trap for me. Frantic fear has overwhelmed. But look. The very trap that they set for me has sprung shut upon themselves instead of me. My heart, O oh God, is quiet and confident. Now I can sing with passion your wonderful praise. Awake, O oh my soul, with the music of his splendor song. Arise, my soul, and sing praises. My worship will awaken the dawn, greeting the daybreak with my song. 
acts of light. Wherever I go, I will thank my God. Among the nations, they will hear my praise, songs to you. Your love is so extravagant. It reaches the heavens. Your faithfulness is so astonishing. It stretches to the sky. Lord God, be exalted as you soar throughout the heavens. May your shining glory be shown in the skies. Let it be seen above the earth. And so I read that. And I was thinking about David, and I th was thinking about his life, and, you know, even in just this one uh, chapter, how he starts out with how great God is, then he goes into what's around him and going on around him, but then goes back to who God is. And so this is what I got. Today, walk in confidence of who he is how big he is. And I love that song. That's my favorite song now. Our God is so big and so strong and so mighty. So some of this comes from that. <laughs> Today walk in the confidence of who he is. Because David had to do that. He had much against him. But he had to walk in confidence. And he said it, said it in this translation. How big he is. How strong he is. That nothing escapes his sight. Walk knowing that he is with you. That he loves you with a perfect love. We might never understand that perfect love till we get to heaven, but we're, we're, we're on our way. Um, walk in confidence that he has a plan and a purpose for your life. As long as you are seeking him, he will get you where you need to be. Don't let the conflict around you distract you from your confidence in him, eyes on him. So at the end, of course, Edie's words that you say come up. But um, the thing is, at the very end, don't let the conflict around you distract you from your confidence in him. And that's what I was getting out of here is she's talking about the traps and the terrorists and all these things. But because of his confidence, he can walk in God. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't succumb again to the darkness around him, but he can walk even amongst the conflict, having confidence. All of us have confidence conflicts in our life. Every one of us have conflicts. But if we know who God is, we can walk in confidence, yes. you know, and again, yes. greater is he in the world. So we don't, you know, he said fear not how many times, 365 times. We don't have to fear. Fear tries to come upon us in that song, fear has to go, right. you know, all those things. We don't bow to them. They have to bow to us. If we realize who he is in us, we don't have to bow to any of those things. But again, it's ch our choice. Yeah. I either go, oh, this crazy thing's going on in my life. I don't know what I'm going to do. Or I look at God, yes. as Edie told Pastor Joyce all the time, eyes on him, eyes on him. If I keep my eyes on how big he is, yes. I won't have to worry about all these other little things. <laughs> you know, They'll be there, and he'll guide and direct us, and he'll get us there. You know, he's got a plan and a purpose for us. All we have to do is seek him. We don't have to try to make anything happen, thank God. If we just keep seeking us, him, he gets us where we need to be. Amen. 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 Yay. So um, what we're going to do is um, um, Tammy actually is going to pray tonight. And... I just want to remind us that, like she said, it's funny because I had the scripture about not being hard-pressed and um, this week, and we are. You know, we, we get hard-pressed, we go through stuff, but we're going through it. So either we're, we're either in it, we're coming out of it, or we're starting to go through it, right? We're stepping into it. So there's always something going on, but God is with us. And there is a time and a place when we get through it and we get to the other side. But it, while we're in the middle and we're going through it, it's important to praise the Lord and understand that he's with us. I mean, there's, um, I talked to um, somebody that left here a few weeks ago while we were on vacation the other day. And, um, you know, still doing good, still strong in the Lord. But going through some things, but remembering, and that's why it's important to remember the good, the things that you're learning to grab a hold of the truth and the revelation, because those things are going to get you through the hard times. And so um, tomorrow is Thanksgiving, and many people have places to go. Some don't. Um, some do. But nonetheless, God 
is at the table with you. Amen. He's at the table with us wherever we're at. And we need to be thankful. And so it's important to thank the Lord for where you're at even right now. I don't know where everybody's at. Personally, I know where we're at. I know where I'm at. But this is the thing. He's with me. And, he, and nothing's a surprise to the Father. Nothing. It's a surprise to me. But it's not a surprise to him. If he didn't think that I was able to get to the other side, he wouldn't be standing there beckoning me to come. Right. So look for your father on the other side of whatever you're going through. And let him live through you. So can you, is this your phone? Let me see your phone a second. No, let me see a second. Okay. It's open so I can play with it. So, uh, not like Brittany. She's naughty. You know what she does? She gets in and takes a bunch of pictures of herself. <laughs> she does. So, and then I go to get in my pictures. You know what I've been doing? I've been streaking her with people that I'm streaking with on that Facebook thing. I send them her pictures. <laughs> Just so you know. Yeah, it's a, something that the kids do. And my, what I do with a couple of teenagers. Yeah. So listen, can you see this, you guys? So this is us. You know, we're broken. We've got cuts and bruises. But the light is still coming. You can do it. If this whole room was dark, you know, if this whole room was dark, and I'm just going to darken it up a little bit. Can you darken it up a little bit? I know it's not going to be great for... Sorry, guys, just hang on with us just for a minute. But um, there's a bunch of stuff in the way. But even if this room was dark, you would be able to get to this light, wouldn't you? Yep. So even if you're in circumstances where there is a lot of darkness and you think that you're not worthy... Go ahead and turn the lights back on. If you think that you're not worthy, I'm here to tell you, you are. There's light in your cracks. There's lights in your holes. Because God is there. And he is fixing them. But not all of them are supposed to seal up. They're healed. But they're transparent. And that's where transparency comes from in our walk with the Lord. It's important to be transparent because that brings you into freedom like never before. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. So, Lord, I just thank you and praise you for everything that you have done and everything that you're going to do. And I thank you, God, for um, Tammy and just her willingness to jump up here on the, on the dime and, and just share her heart on the things that you're doing as she's working in this ministry behind the scenes. I pray, Father, that you touch each one of us with the word today and that you bring us into a new revelation by your spirit. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. Amen.